In this demonstration, we're going to look at configuring read-only domain controller credential caching. So we're going to have a look at configuring a password replication group. We'll have a look at creating a group and manage password replication to remote office read-only domain controllers. We'll configure a password replication policy for the remote office, evaluate the resulting password replication policy, and then just monitor our credential caching. So the first thing we need to do is just verify that our Active Directory domain is at least Windows Server 2003 for its domain function level. So we'll come into Active Directory users and computers. Right click on our domain and what we'll do here is we'll just raise the main function level. Need to make sure it's at least 2003. Well, it's at 2012 I can raise it up to. It's currently 2008 or 2, so that's fine. So we'll just click cancel at this point here. Now we've done all of that, next thing we need to do here is just come to domain controllers. And what we want to do here is we just actually want to pre-create our read-only domain controller computer account. So we'll right click, come to pre-create read-only domain controller account. Select our next button, and now what we need to do is we just need to work through the wizard. Logged in as administrator, so I'm quite happy with the network credentials. Now what we want to do here is just fill out the computer name, which is going to be lon-svr1, and select next. I've only got one active directory site, so I'll put it in default first site name, and select next. I'm happy with the additional domain controller options, so it's going to be DNS server and global catalog, and select next. Just going to specify the IT group for the delegation of RODC installation administration. So we're going to specify a date and backslash IT and just select set. And I'll select next. And then I'll select next again, just in the summary. And as we can see here, it's pre-creating the computer account. Now what we'll do is we'll move over to LonServe1 and what we'll do is we'll install this as a read-only domain controller. So on the machine here, all we're going to do is we're going to add roles and features. That's going to bring me in wizards. So we'll just select next. My installation type at this point here will actually be a role-based or feature-based installation. So we'll select next. Server selection will be this server. So we'll select next. Then what we do is we just want to come in here and install our Active Directory domain services. So we'll turn on the tick box for that. We'll add these additional features. And then what we'll do at this point here is we'll select next. For additional features, we'll just select next. And then what we'll do at this point here, just have a quick read through the summary and select next. And finally select install. So what this is going to do now, it's going to go away and install Active Directory. Rather than sit and watch this for however many minutes it takes, what we'll do is we'll pause the presentation and return back once the installation is complete. So as we can see, everything is now installed, so we're just going to promote this server to a domain controller. Now it brings me into another wizard. So on the wizard, what we're going to do here is we're just going to specify our domain as a datum.com. And we're going to do that as a user called April. So we'll just type in a datum backslash April. And specify April's password and select OK. So we'll select the datum.com, select OK, and select Next. And what we can see here is there's a pre-created read-only domain control account that matches the name target already exists. If we just show more here, and it's just saying choose them whether to use the existing domain account or reinstall. Well, we do actually want to use the existing controller. So what we're going to do here is we'll use the existing read-only domain controller account and now we'll just specify our directory services restore mode password. So now we'll specify the password and confirm the password. We'll select next. Just on the additional options, we'll just go for replicate from any domain controller and select next. We're happy with the default path, so we'll select next. We'll review all of the options. We're happy with all of this, so we'll select Next. It's now going to go away and do our prerequisite check. It says everything's good, so we'll select Install. This is going to go away now and just install Active Directory. So at this point here, we'll just pause the presentation and return back once the presentation is complete. So as we can see now, 
it's nearly done and what will happen once this is actually completed the server will restart and come back up as an Active Directory domain controller so as you can see now we're about to be signed out the machine's going to do a restart so what we'll do is we'll pause the presentation again and return back once the reboot has completed so as we can now see the server's come back up again so the next thing we need to do here is we just need to come in and start configuring our password replication groups so in order to do that we need to go back to our main active directory domain controller which in my case is lon dc1 so what we're going to do here in active direct users and computers is just come down to users and in the users container what we can see here if we pull this across a little bit we've got a allowed read only domain controller password replication group and if we have a look we've also got a denied read only domain controller password replication group so let's just have a look at the allowed read only domain controller password replication group and as we can see here there aren't any members now what we're going to do here is we're just going to cancel this out we're just going to come into our domain controllers we're just going to go to lon serve one and then if we just have a look at our password replication policy what we should see is we can see the password replication policy so we can see it says here it stores users and computers passwords according to policy below we can see what's allowed and we can see what's denied and the two main ones really for us are the allowed read-only domain controller password policy replication group which remember no members and we've also got the denied so at this point here all we'll do is we'll just select ok next thing we're going to do here is just create a group to manage password replication to the remote office read-only domain controller so what we're going to do here is we're just going to come down to the research organizational unit we're going to create a new group and what we're going to do here is just fill out the little wizard we're going to call that remote office users so we'll select ok now we've done that what we'll do is we'll just go to our group that we've just created and what we'll do here is we'll just come to the members tab what we're going to do is we're going to add some members so we'll select that and we'll just put in the names of the users so what we've done here is we've added Ziz, Colin, Lucas and Louise so what we'll also do as well is we just want to add in some computers as well so all we're going to do here as well is just go for our object types also add in computers as well select ok and we're also going to add in lon cl1 now we've done all of that we'll just select ok and we've now created our remote office users group we now want to add that group to our read-only domain controller so we'll come to domain controllers on serve one we'll go for the password replication policy and this point here we'll select add and what we'll do is we'll allow passwords to be replicated and select ok and what we'll do now is we'll just put in our remote group and then we'll select ok and we'll select apply so we just click the advanced button here what it brings us into is we've got a result and policy tab and we get a policy usage tab so let's go with result and policy at this point here all we'll do is we'll select add and all we'll do is we'll type in our username that we want to just verify check the names at this point here select ok and as we can see we are allowing password policy replication so we'll just close all this down next thing we'll do here is we'll just go back across lon serve one and we'll attempt to log in as it is that will fail because he isn't a domain administrator but we would just want to see if the password is actually being cached so at this point here we'll just put in his password after switching user so at this point here we'll just try to log in will fail like we said we're not allowed to we're not an administrator we just come back to the domain controller and what we want to do here is we just want to verify so just back to our server here back to our password replication policy back to advanced what we can see now is we can see is 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 actually sitting here now on the policy usage if we scroll this along a little bit we can see he's now on the tab final thing we'll do here is we'll just pre-populate the credential caching so we've got a little button down here that says pre-populate passwords and what we'll do here is we'll just add in Louise as a user and also Lon CL1 as a computer. Now we've done that, we'll just select OK. Telling us here if we are pre populating passwords of the user account, be sure to pre populate the passwords of the computer account that the users will also use. We're happy with that, so we'll say yes. 
Passwords for all accounts were successfully pre-populated. So we'll select OK and we can now see the computer and the user have been added to the list. And that's the end of this demonstration of pre-configuring an Active Directory read-only domain controller and also setting up a password policy replication policy as well. Thank you.